Crossroads Media. Kellen Moore experience calling plays some good things, some not so good things. When things were good, though, they were really good. They were finishing in the top of the league with some of their offensive statistics with Dak Prescott and some good playmakers there in Dallas. At the same time, though, they didn't skip a beat when he left. Dallas was great this year. Until, well, the traditional, here's the playoffs, you're probably going to lose moment happens. But it's irrelevant who the offensive coordinator is at that time. That's the Dallas Cowboys. So that's not a Kellen Moore thing that they lost. and They, they just lose. That's what they do. They lose. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter who's there. They could have the greatest person to ever live. The greatest human being football-wise to ever live in Dallas. And they're probably going to lose. But they didn't skip a beat, and they won a ton of games, and they looked outstanding, and their offense was sensational when he wasn't there, too. So what does that tell you? Anything? Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't tell you anything. Kellen Moore didn't light the world on fire with Justin Herbert. It scares me that this was supposed to be the hot new item. A few years back, he was the shiny new toy. And now he's ready to rock on his third franchise. There's a couple of quarterbacks that I want to compare to Kellen Moore to show you where I think his ceiling could be, but maybe he's not consistent enough, which is why he's flirting in no man's land a little bit. So there's two. One, straight up is Dak. Dak is... Great at times and sensational at times and looks really good at times. But there's something holding him back from being in that category of the next jump, right? Kellen Moore has that ability, but he also has the ability to come up short. And so does Dak Prescott. I hope you guys can see that correlation. And then I know the end of Carson Wentz was very sour, but there was a middle ground. So when he had the MVP type season, when he got in, injured. He was one of the best quarterbacks on the planet. He was in charge to win the most valuable player in the entire league before the Los Angeles Rams game happened, right? But then there was some times where they were four and seven and then they rallied five wins in a row to end the season. But he carried a Greg Ward. He carried a Travis Fulgham. I don't even know some of the other receivers. Uh, Was Nelson? No. J.J. Rake? uh, J.J. Artega White said Jalen Rager, some of that dysfunction, right? But he carried them to the playoffs and won some games, albeit, hey, they beat a Giants team or they beat this team. Regardless, there was time sprinkled in after the injuries and all that he did still show a little bit of that high ceiling until he eventually just mentally, I guess, forgot how to do all of this, and it is what it is. I'm saying there was a time where we were conflicted. He's showing signs of that great quarterback again, but then that also came with the, all right, playing hero ball and taking 90 sacks because he's sitting in the pocket looking for a 60-yard bomb, but forgot that it was Greg Ward running the route, and you're expecting him to go make a special play. Now Carson Wentz is taking a 12 yard yard loss because it's freaking Carson Wentz and that's what he did so my point is Kellen Moore I think he can give you those signs of excellence and give you the whoa hold on is he a leader whoa hold on like offensive coordinator that has that in his bag that's pretty damn impressive it'll come with those negatives is he as consistent is sort of my question which brings us to a piece on the athletic and This was looking back after he got fired from the Dallas Cowboys or left the Dallas Cowboys, and they went back and looked in the athletic at what went wrong during that time. And they repurposed this when the Eagles made the hire. So I just want to read you a couple blurbs from this and give you an example on what the experts who covered those Dallas teams thought by the end. So there were three points to hit on. Point number one, play design was top-notch, but the offense was wildly inconsistent. How does an offense make sense with great players and spatial conflicts that allow for guys to be open in space, but it cannot find a groove of consistency? 
All right? Whether it's Bill Walsh or Andy Reid, it's about setting things up throughout a game so that you have a special play or opportunity at moments of truth. Too often, what worked for the Cowboys in the early part of the game or in early parts of the season would not be built upon. Conceptually, this might be vague, but we know it when we see it. The Cowboys would get figured out and there would be a sequencing issue that never fully got mastered. Just like a pitcher might set you up early and save the kill shot for when you were stuck with two strikes. An offense should do the same thing. The trouble was, at key moments during key games, it simply never found the solution at the highest leverage moments. All right, here's number two. Sorry, these are a little bit out of order here. All right, I got to put these papers in order. I do the whole job of printing them out and planning and show prep, and then here I am right in front of me. I got three before two. I got all the positives mixed in there, which is not where I'm at right now. Okay, number two. Offensive routinely... Uh, the offense routinely faded after Thanksgiving. The scheme issue reared its head in 21 and 22 when things began collapsing at roughly the same time of the year. Teams figure out what you like to do and begin to turn the screws on you. They take away your tendencies and strengths and make you beat them with your counters on top of your previous counters. We talked about it at very great length before the playoffs began. The Cowboys were 31st in 21 and 22 when it came to first down runs after Thanksgiving. They were unable to run the ball at all. Loaded boxes, empty boxes, you name it. This placed incredible undue stress on the offense that lacked receivers who could get open. Everyone wanted Dak Prescott to do something, and he looked for someone to get open who wasn't named CeeDee Lamb, and it just wasn't working. The ball was forced into guys with no separation, and we saw how that worked out, or did it. Turnover started to happen, etc. All right, and then number three. The route concepts were never evolved into something better. Too often, the Cowboys offense is built on a foundation of what we call spot routes. Although the language will vary all over the football world, spot routes could mean curl and hook patterns, but to me, and for this discussion, let's refer to spot routes as anything that is caught while the receiver is facing the quarterback and not moving east or west. So comebacks, stops, hooks, curls, the primary routes into this, and the Cowboys have loved to run them over the past decade. When you are stationary or even close to stationary, and your back is to the end zone for which you wish to score, then you limit the amount of damage an offense can do. So those were the three things that was sort of getting picked apart from Kellen Moore's scheme standpoint. And you could make the argument that all of that is fugazi currently because where the the Philadelphia Eagles stand, they add Brian Johnson. They add Nick Sirianni. So at least you're getting a coordinator that's been on the sidelines, who has actively called plays, who, by the way, will probably look at Nick Sirianni at some point, be like, dude, this is my offense. I I do think he has that level of stature. Now, maybe he shouldn't, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't really know the vibe of Kellen Moore yet. When I heard Matt Patricia speak, not that Matt Patricia's great, trust me, he blows, but I just didn't think his personality matched what maybe the public perception was, and he had a different tone, a different direction. I heard the Bill Belichick tree. I thought he'd be more, uh, you know, intense and all, and it really wasn't that way. He clearly lacks something in regards to having a relationship with certain players, but that's not neither here nor there. I don't really know what Kellen Moore is. I'm just saying when you have at least the resume that he has and when you're sold that this is my offense, you could do whatever you want. You can call whatever play you want. You're bringing in the scheme. Your ideas matter here. We got stale, so let's have at it. Let's give it a go. You know, if Sirianni wants to peek his head into the meetings after he peeks his head into the Vic Fangio meetings, I believe Kellen Moore goes, dude, get your ass out of here. Uh-uh. Skedaddle. Scram. 